In this video, we're going to consider a function whose rule is determined by a graph. And so what one should understand with when it comes to a graphical function, um, we're going to take the input values at, from the x-axis, and then the output values are going to come from the y-axis. Therefore, when you see a point like this one, x comma, the y-coordinate is going to be the evaluation f of x right there. That's going to be useful to us as we work through these ones right here. Now, the first thing they'll ask about is the, is the domain and range of this function. So the domain here, domain of f, this is going to be the collection of all x coordinates that we see actually appearing on the graph. Let's assume that the entire graph is displayed uh, in front of us right here. Now, if we go to the far, far, far right, the biggest x coordinate we get is going to be over here on the right at 1, 2, 3. So x equals 3 is the biggest value, and it's obtained right here on the graph. Uh, on the other hand, the smallest x coordinate we can see on the graph is going to be here at 1, 2, negative 3, obtained by this point right here. So, and since there's no breaks or gaps in the graph along the way, uh, we would say something like the domain of this function is from negative 3 to 3 right here. Now, a, a few things I want to comment here. Like, if first of all, there, if there was like some open point right here where it was removed, that's a possibility. We'd have to modify the domain and say something like, oh, we're going to go from negative 3 to, to negative 2, uh, parenthesis, union, negative 2 to 3. That's a possibility here. Now, let me kind of quickly remind you about interval notation for a moment. If you write something like bracket a comma b bracket, what this means is you're looking for all x coordinates which are greater than or equal to a but less than or equal to b. Having a bracket here means that the endpoint is included. On the other hand, if you had something like parenthesis a comma b parenthesis, this means that x is greater than a and less than b, and the endpoints b and a are not included inside of the interval. You, of course, can mix and match. You could do something like parenthesis a comma b bracket, which would mean that x is strictly greater than a but less than or equal to b. You can have this half open, half closed interval. That's a possibility. And then you also have this union symbol where you can glue together disjoint intervals. So for example, we could be taking the interval from negative three up to two, and then negative two, and then we go from negative two up to three right here. This is just removing the point negative two, and like that sad, sad kid who didn't get picked on the dodgeball team, negative two would feel very sad in that situation. But that is an acceptable domain. Now our example doesn't have any gaps or holes in it, so we get one continuum of points, we get x from negative three to neg or to positive three inclusive here. So this is the domain. Range can be a little bit trickier here uh, because with the domain, you just read the graph left to right. With the range, you gotta read it, read it up and down, but the maximum and minimums could be somewhat obscure or hidden if the graph is complicated. Now the biggest point appears to be right here at, x, at y equals two. And the smallest point, you might be you might be tempted to be like, oh, this is the smallest point. No, 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 no. That's just the rightmost point. The smallest y coordinate is actually right here at y equals negative two. And so these endpoints right here don't have any bearing on the range necessarily. I mean, it is true that this is also the minimum value. This is the minimum. This is the maximum. The range is looking what numbers sit. What are the what's the range that the minimum maximum go across here. And so clearing off my screen real quick, we see that the range of our function goes from negative two up to two, because again, there's no holes or gaps along the y coordinate here. The y, the y, the, yeah, the y coordinates. Now, like we mentioned before, determining evaluation of a graphical function is pretty nice. If you want to do f of two, you just come along the x-axis until you hit x equals two, and then you look at the point right here. And like we saw a moment ago, uh, at, sorry, when y equals two, when x equals two, y equals negative two. So we see that f of two is negative two. And similarly, if we wanted to do x equals three, that is f of three, we come and look at the graph when x is three, y equals negative one. And so that would then be the evaluation there, f of three equals one. Um, another one, let's take a look at f of negative one. That means we would come along the graph, the x-axis, until we find negative 1. Look at the point there, as we saw earlier, negative 1. When x is negative 1, y is equal to 2. So we would then record a positive 2 right there. And you know, let's just do a few more. f of negative 2, 
Uh, what do you see happening there? When x is negative 2, uh, that would be right here on the graph. So we look at this point right here. When it comes to a graphical representation, the, the points won't always be integers. So do your best to estimate them. That's kind of a defect of graphs. You can see the whole picture, but sometimes it can be difficult to determine the exact value here. Um, I'm, of course, choosing convenient values. When x is negative 2, the y coordinate would be 1, positive 1. So that's the function evaluation there. Uh, if we were to do uh, the next one, f of negative 3, my graph's kind of messy right now, so let me clean this up. If we did negative 3, that would be at this, this where we are on the x-axis coming down here. We're going to get negative 3 comma negative 2. That's our y-coordinate. The y-coordinate is the evaluation. And then finally, when x equals 0, we're going to be actually at the origin, so we can see that um, f of 0 would equal 0 in that situation. I already had the answer there. Whoops-a-daisy. And so that's how evaluation works on a graph. You just look on the graph, find the x-coordinate, and then you record the y-coordinate. That's the function evaluation. That's all there is to evaluating with, with a graph there. Uh, what about solving equations when it comes to a graph? What if we want to solve the equation f of x equals 1? The thing to remember here is that this is the y-coordinate. We're looking for when y equals 1. And so that might, the, uh, an easy way of doing this would be to draw the, ver the horizontal line y equals 1. We're drawing the line when y equals 1. And we look for where does this line intersect the graph. This would happen right here at x equals negative 2. And it would happen right here. Again, we might have to kind of estimate that one a little bit. What does that look like? Um, it's not, I mean, it's definitely not an integer. I'm going to say about negative 0.3. That looks like, that's what it looks like to me. X equals negative 0.3. Uh, this one's definitely negative 2. We saw that one earlier. So by intersecting the line, we can then solve this equation. X equals negative 2 and negative 0.3. Well, let's try this again with a different value. Let's solve the equation F of X equals 3. Where does the function equal 3 here? Uh, and so we would then, in this case, draw a horizontal line at x, uh, y equals 3. That's going to be up here, right? y equals 3. Now we're going to see that our function nowhere intersects the line y equals 3. They never touch each other. And because they never intersect, that means there's no solution to this right here. We get no solution. You can abbreviate it like that. Or we can actually write out no solution. Geometrically, there's no solution because the function never touches the line y equals 3. Now, inequalities, how do, we, how do we do with inequalities here? So inequalities are handled very similar to how we solve equations graphically. We're going to start off by drawing the horizontal line y equals 0. Now, be aware that's just the x-axis in this case. Let me clean up what we already have on the screen here. If we draw just the x-axis, I'm going to draw it just to emphasize it. Uh, we're looking for those values for which the y-coordinate is less than or equal to 0, right? So we're trying to figure out where is the y-coordinate less than or equal to 0. That would mean we want to be below, below the x-axis. Now, because it's less than or equal to, we also want the x-intercepts themselves. So we can see where are we below the x-axis. That happens right here. We're going to be below the x-axis. We're also below the x-axis right here. So seeing from what we have on the picture right here, where in, when is f of x less than or equal to 0? This is going to be written in interval notation. We go from negative 3 to the x-intercept. Uh, what do we think the x-intercept is right here? It's between negative 3 and negative 2. It seems to be a little bit closer to negative 2 than it is to 3, but it's, it's not quite. It's pretty close to the midpoint. Let's estimate that as around negative 2.4. Uh, that's one point where it's less than zero, less than or equal to zero. We get a bracket right there. Uh, next, we're going to take the union. We put a bracket here because we are less than or equal to zero. If this was if this was a strict less than symbol, we wouldn't want to have a bracket. We actually would have a parenthesis right there. But because it's less than or equal to, we include the x-intercept. The other thing is. The, x inter the other x-intercept here is going to be at 0. Uh, and so when is it below the x-axis? This will be from 0 to the end of the function, which is negative 3 there, or positive 3. So we're going to go from 0 to 3. And so this would be the solution set to that inequality written in interval notation using unions as is appropriate there.
And so that shows us how we can find the domain and range of a graphical function, how we can evaluate the function, and how we can solve equations and inequalities by looking at the graph. The key thing to remember here is that the function evaluation is the y-coordinate. If you keep that in mind, we can solve a lot of these problems using the graph of the function.